What's up everybody? So, recovery day. Um, this is a really hard day for me actually most of the time because I don't enjoy doing nothing or not getting in a full workout, but it's super important to get in recovery, especially whenever you're doing really heavy lifts. So today I'm gonna go um, through recovery after a deadlift day specifically. What kind of recovery I like to do, some mobility, some banded work. Um, ways to open up my hips and get some blood flow in there um, as well as offer up some ideas for you guys all right guys so lacrosse balls foam rollers um my foam roller is actually inside so i'm gonna have to ask danielle to get it for me but i really do think that number one for recovery is listen to your body honestly after a deadlift day my upper back my lower back and my butt are really feeling it usually even my wrists um lately from all of the grip so I spend time doing the static stretches that will help out with that. So if it is wrist, I will do some wrist stretches. Uh, lots of different ones. Ones um, not on the floor would be trying to go every direction, holding for 10 seconds each way. So you're going palm facing you, fingers facing down, fingers facing up, hand turning inward, hand turning outward, and then also for the wrists um, and the forearms going down having your fingers facing you stretching and then leaning it back all right try to go each direction a little bit shifting left and right i'm a big fan of um dr kelly starrett he's super awesome he's the author of um is that becoming a supple leopard but the supple leopard book and owner founder of the ready state which is an app a website they do mobility challenges i just went through their overhead mobility challenge for 14 days Hopefully my overhead mobility is better. But things I've learned from him, things I've learned from um, Aaron um, Horshig, Horshnigs, I don't know how to say his last name. Um, Dr. Aaron H, he is the author of the Squat Bible, the owner of uh, Squat University. Different mobility drills. And it's kind of like mobility, such a junk word now I feel, because people are just like doing static stretches and then saying that they're doing mobility. But things I've learned from them are terms like noodling around spending time in positions that will be advantageous to your deadlift. So I will do lots of hip hinging patterns coming up. I'll do some glute bridges, activate those glutes. I'm gonna get deep into my glutes with this roller ball. I'm gonna get into my TFL. I'm gonna get in those hip flexors. I'm gonna get those adductors involved. I'm gonna get my quads, um, give them some love. I wanna be as loose as possible, trying to break up that tissue as much as possible that is hurting and sore from the day. Even my biceps, um, you don't want to tear a bicep because of a deadlift. I've seen it and it's not pretty. Um, getting in there, getting all up and down the spine, especially that thoracic spine and moving around in those positions. Super important, listen to your body. Static stretches, um, you could do things like a cat cow, you know, moving in between those, a cobra stretch, down dog, all those things. So I will go through some of those kind of yoga movements, never holding longer than like a minute. The only one I hold for a long time is the pigeon stretch. I like to do pigeon on the floor and pigeon elevated, um, noodling around in that position. So I'm still doing a lot for my hips. My hips generally um, are pretty tight and I wanna feel loose and I wanna feel um, 100% before I hit my overhead press day tomorrow. So I'm just gonna uh, run you through these, have a little voiceover going on as I do it. Let's roll. important to breathe in these patterns, right? I also think um, there's something to be said for warming up before a workout like this, uh, before this, or maybe do some body weight squats, some body weight glute bridges, um, arm circles to get your body a little bit looser. Biggest thing is breathing, telling your central nervous system to calm the heck down. But I'm right here, I'm feeling some tightness right there, my shoulder blades, so I'm gonna spend some time here, opening up, add some tension by having a glute bridge. Super nice, that kind of stuff. Glute bridge, you're putting way more pressure into that ball. And I find where it feels tight, so when my arms up here, feeling some tightness, the noodle around there, kick up my leg bridge, oof, that's super tight. my way down the spine, slowly but surely. Mm 
Also when I do this, I make sure to protect my low back by squeezing my glutes and bracing my core. Generally, I'll spend about an hour um, rolling around, literally on this ball. I probably spend at least 10 minutes on my back alone, probably more, probably closer to 20. Like we're already four minutes in, and I was about halfway through my spine, right about here. So more than half, actually. I definitely think recovery is something that people are like turning into a weird coin turn. I'm just like. The word mobility, the word functional training, like all that kind of stuff is becoming like junk words now because people want to sell products. Um, honestly, you don't need anything more than a lacrosse ball, a peanut, which is literally two lacrosse balls duct taped together. Um, you can buy like peanuts that are harder, softer, ones that have like spikes on them, like the two roller balls of spikes. Um, I know Dr. Kelly Starrett on his Ready State website sells. Um, one I think that's called the Gemini. But just remember, whatever you buy, you gotta use. Like everything in this gym, I use every day, either with myself or with my clients, um, or often enough that it's worth it. Like farmer carry handles, if you're not farmer carrying at least once a week, or you don't have clientele that's farmer carrying at least once a week, probably not worth it for you. Battle ropes, right? That's something that was like kind of a hot item whenever the hit style gyms like Bird and Orange Theory and other hit classes really became popular. Um, but they're a great shoulder burner, I think. I really like the conditioning aspect for the upper body because in Strongman there's a lot of conditioning um, and just building that lactic acid up and working through it. So something I consider pretty useful. Yeah, now at this point I'm going to work my way all the way down my spine. I'm right at the bottom of my low back, right at the top of my hips. So I'm going to start working my way to the other side. And then I'm going to get in that piriformis, get in those glutes, spend some time really digging in there, getting that TFL, getting those hip flexors, and getting some adductors, and then quads. Uh, and then I'll come back and hit those lats and triceps pretty hard. For me, that's a big thing. Um, finding your soreness point. I know when I reach overhead, I immediately feel tightness right into my lat, right into that serratus. Um, I tend to carry some tightness there. So I really want to work on that. And that's why body awareness is super important. All right, being aware. Um, your warm up sets, treat them as time to kind of get to know your body and learn where you're at. Whenever you're working out, I always think of my warm up time as my kind of get to know where I am time. If you are experiencing knee pain, early on in your squat warm-up sets and you know then maybe you spend some time foam rolling out your quads maybe you do a couch stretch hold for 30 seconds i don't think you should do any kind of static stretching for more than 30 seconds um prior to a workout in your warm-up maybe do stuff to dynamically warm up your quads a little bit maybe you hop on the assault bike or um echo bike whatever bike you have i have an echo bike and roll out and spend some time just cycling, getting some movement in there. Maybe you need to brace up your knee for the day, um, seeing where you're at. Listening to your body will make a huge difference. It also makes you way more aware in your lifts. If you know where you're not tight in your deadlift, where you're not pulling the slack out of, if, you're, if your arms are hanging low, I see this all the time, where arms are like hanging low, then whenever you pull up, you have to kind of pull everything up. But if you have everything tight, then you're just lifting things as a unit. It's literally like you're pushing the floor away. You got the bar in your hands, right? Your hands are holding the bar. That's a terrible analogy. 
but it's like you're pushing the floor away to lift it. You're doing this, an actual hinging action, right? Instead of going, pulling up and then lifting, you are literally just straight up lifting that bar. So listen to your body, pay attention. I'm gonna go do the other side. All right, so I didn't know if this would be super useful for you guys, but I want to show you different um, actions because we tend to do a ton of breaking the hips, extending of the hips, so trying to stand up as fast as possible with the deadlift. But something like this, these little lift-offs, this works your hip flexors. I have that um, lacrosse ball dug into the sorest part of my butt. And when I'm doing a lot like bridging, whenever you're getting your back, is you're lifting up and you're putting a lot of pressure and weight into it. Not only that, but I'm getting my adductors involved, I'm flexing my quad and my um, hip flexor, adductors, everything working together. So this kind of, these little lift-offs, you can also do these sitting up all the way, um, lifting off and then lifting up and over. But super important that these kind of things we tend to ignore because they're smaller muscles and we don't care about them, but we don't realize that hip flexor pain is usually caused by overuse and also weakness. So every time you do a hanging leg raise or a dragon flag or a dragon fly or a heels to heaven or whatever, where you're raising your legs up, you tend to be using hip flexors a lot more than your abs. And then you're like, oh my God, my legs hurt or my hip flexors are so sore. And it's because we are really, really tense, really, really tight and really, really weak in that area. So doing things like a banded hip flexor march with the band around your feet, um, something like that, super helpful and will also help relieve low back pain. Working on lift offs where you are literally, so it reminds me of like a gymnastic thing, but where you're literally lifting your legs straight up. I feel that my hip flexor immediately because I have pretty weak hip flexors. I just pulled my hip flexor about 10 weeks ago now. Doing these little lift offs, you could either put cones here to lift off or dumbbells and then doing, you know, the other side, trying to stand tall, doing them both inside, outside, things like that. The Jane Fonda's, all that kind of stuff. Strengthening weaker muscles like the glute medius, like the hip flexors. Don't forget about them. Your off days are a great day to do this kind of stuff all your rolling out, your time on the bike, your light cardio, your um, low intensity steady state cardio, working on your weaker muscles. Maybe this is when you do your, your banded rotator cuff exercises, rear delt raises, all that kind of stuff. Um, program it accordingly. I really think it's important. Don't neglect it. Take care of your body. Don't miss the small stuff. Hip flexors are important. Think about the opposite things. We spend a lot of time gripping like this. We don't extend. So dunk in your hand in a bag of rice and um, or a bucket full of rice going in and opening your hands up huge because we're always working on that huge grip so what is this the wrist is flexing <laughs> so then extending we're pretty weak in that pattern sorry I have food coloring on my hand but going like this something to work on and also help re uh, relieve elbow and wrist pain possibly depending on if it's just an overuse injury but things like tendonitis I hear those words a lot and a lot of uh, pain words in the gym and typically the source of the pain usually isn't the like the cause so if your knee hurts, it's probably maybe your quads or your hip or your ankle. And um, if your wrist hurts, it's probably caused by imbalance or caused by something at the shoulder. If your elbow hurts, wrist or shoulder issues. So don't ignore the small muscles. Don't forget about your rotator cuff. Don't forget about your rear delts. Don't forget about your hip flexors. Don't forget about rolling out things like your TFL, like the, um, oh, and the glute medius. Don't forget about glute medius. And um, always talk to a doctor if you're in pain. This is uh, not, I'm not a doctor. So... Don't worry about those things. Do some hip flexor strengthening exercises and I will make a full video on this eventually. All right guys, so after about uh, 40 minutes of rolling out, especially into the TFL and hip flexors, uh, my hair starts to get cute. And now we are on the bike. Oh, oh, somebody's on a rollerball having a good time. So I've been on here for about 16 minutes gonna work my way up to 30. I'm just trying to get some blood flow. I am not working hard. My wattage is currently at 50, so I'm barely moving. Um, taking my time. Slacker. Yeah, slacker. Trying to get some blood flow in those legs. Tomorrow's overhead press day. I think I may um, go for some heavy push presses. I've really been feeling the push press and that's super important for all the strong men. Danielle's having a really good time. She's getting pumped for overhead press day tomorrow. Let's get it. Oh, get it. How many reps are we going to do? Oh, it's, it's a whole. Oh, it's, a, it's an isometric? Yeah, it's a, it's a pause. Oh, it's a pause rep? Okay. Help. Okay. Come back. Okay. 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 Ok
Can I Show me the mechanics? Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's some good stuff. Oh, so you shift from side to side? Yeah. How long, how many reps do you do side to side? Two. Two? Okay, cool. So we flex at the spine. Actually, not just the little, we, we flex at the whole back. Okay, and the, oh, so we round first. Okay. So here, wait, show me the whole thing. So we pull the handles down. Yep, just like so. And then you around. fall down and you round. So we're, we're really flexing at the mid and lower back. And then you oh, and then we swing a little bit. So we're kind of getting a little thoracic rotation. Uh -huh. This is like, revolutionary. Uh -huh. and then you, one, two, three. Do you thrust your legs like that when you do it? Oh, oh yeah. Break that equipment. Okay. And how many sets do we do this for per week? Um, three sets. Three sets? Three, three sets, sets all week long? No, three sets a day, three times a week. Okay. So nine total sets. Yeah. Okay, per week. Uh -huh. Is that enough volume to get the games? Yes. 